Have you ever wondered if there's anything that you can do to build your bones naturally? Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 ways that you can build your bones naturally. The best way to build bones is actually to do it naturally. And these 10 ways work whether you also choose to take medication or not. It's critically important to build bones naturally, even if you're taking medication to manage your bone health. This is because while many medications slow or stop bone from being broken down, they don't do anything to improve the quality of your bones. But when you improve your bones naturally, you do just that. You improve the quality of your bones. Being able to improve the quality of your bones is absolutely worth it. Hey, I'm Sarah and I'm a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also bone fit certified and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Here on this channel, we talk about all things related to bone health and I am so glad that you are here. Today, we're gonna to be going over a list of 10 ways that you can build your bones naturally. So let's get started. Number one is to eat a diet rich in vitamin C. Vitamin C is a necessary part of the collagen that makes up our bone matrix. Since vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin, we need to eat foods with vitamin C every day. Other ways that our bodies benefit from vitamin C include helping our bodies to form muscles, cartilage, and blood vessels. Vitamin C is also an antioxidant that helps to protect our bodies from developing cancer. The daily recommended amount of vitamin C is 75 milligrams for women and 90 milligrams for men. Here's a handy list of some foods that have a high concentration of vitamin C in them. The list is actually taken from the USDA top 10 foods that are highest in vitamin C. Guavas, kiwi fruit, colored bell peppers, strawberries, oranges, papayas, broccoli, tomatoes, snow peas, and kale. Number two on our list is to eat enough protein. Did you know that our bones are composed of 50% protein? We often think about our bones needing calcium and they do need it, but our bones also need good quality protein. By good quality protein, I mean the protein that we consume needs to contain all of the essential amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins in our bodies and we actually need 20 of them. Our bodies naturally produce 11, which means that we have to eat the other nine on a regular basis. If you're someone who eats animal products like beef, fish, eggs, and dairy, then you're likely getting all of the essential amino acids that you need. But it, what if you don't eat animal products? How can you ensure that you're getting all the essential amino acids that your body needs? It's important to include complete protein sources in your diet or to combine foods like rice and beans together to make complete proteins. Here's a list of some complete proteins that are plant-based sources. Amaranth, quinoa, spirulina, chia seeds, hemp seeds, which are also low on the glycemic index. So if you're working to lower your blood sugar, keep hemp seeds in mind. And lastly, soy and soy-based products like tofu. Foods that combine well together to make complete proteins include rice and beans, peanut butter and whole grain bread, and pita bread with hummus from chickpeas. Also, if you have access to it at your local grocery store, there is a brand of bread, Ezekiel bread, that's made to form a complete protein. Ezekiel bread has a unique flavor to it if you haven't tried it before. I personally think it tastes better toasted. So if you're gonna try it out, maybe give it a go toasted. The other thing to consider with protein in your diet is how much protein is the right amount. Conventional nutrition says that the right amount is equal to half of your body weight in pounds to be consumed in grams each day. There's a growing movement in nutrition and bone health to eat a protein focused diet. So is that better? There are quite a few medical studies that I'll link to in the description below 
They indicate that more protein than the conventional amount is helpful for bone health. There are also studies coming out that indicate that more than 100 grams of protein daily for women could also cause calcium to leach out of the bones. Personally, I would take a middle of the road approach to make protein an important part of your daily eating, but make sure that you don't exceed 100 grams of protein per day. Number three on our list, include healthy calcium in your diet daily. Calcium is an essential mineral for our bone matrix and we need to consume it regularly. Did you know that our bodies also use calcium to move our muscles and to send nerve impulses throughout our bodies? This means that when other parts of our bodies need calcium, it's released from our bones. In this way, our bones function as storehouses for calcium for our bodies. This makes it really important for us to have enough of it to support our bones and for our bodies to stay healthy and strong. It's best to consume calcium in the food that we eat, but that isn't always possible. Foods that are rich in calcium include dairy, plant-based milks that have been fortified with calcium, read labels carefully to know how much calcium is in various products on the plant milk front. Other calcium rich foods include sardines, dark leafy greens like cabbage, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and kale. Soy based products like plant milks can be a good source of calcium, but they also require reading labels to know what you're getting. Spinach has a lot of calcium in it, but because it also has oxalic acid, the calcium isn't readily available, making it not a good source of calcium. Kale also has oxalic acid, but a much smaller amount. And when kale is cooked, it becomes a good source of calcium. If you decide to supplement calcium, it's important to know that our bodies can't properly absorb more than about 500 milligrams of calcium at one time. Taking more calcium than this can lead to calcification of the arteries and also potentially to kidney stones. Also, calcium carbonate is often the least expensive form of calcium, but it isn't as readily absorbed by our bodies. So look for a calcium supplement that has citrate in it or calcium hydroxyapatite. Those are the preferable forms of calcium. Number four, make sure that you're getting enough vitamin D and K in your diet. Vitamin D and K work well together, and if you're supplementing them, they might be able to be taken together depending on the amounts that you need of both of them. 40% of adults in the United States don't have enough vitamin D in their diets to properly absorb calcium. This isn't good for our bones. We can get vitamin D from the sun, from fatty fish, beef liver, and egg yolks. Because of the possibility of getting skin cancer, we often wear sunblock to protect ourselves, which is a good thing, but it also means that we're less likely to get the necessary vitamin D from the sun that we actually need. Unless we're regularly eating foods that contain enough vitamin D in them, it's likely that supplementing vitamin D will be an important thing to do. The daily recommended amount of vitamin D3 is 800 international units daily. This is a maintenance amount. So if you're among the 40% of people who don't have enough vitamin D, you may need more than this to get your body into the best place for bone health. Since vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, it's stored in our bodies and it's also possible to get too much of it. We need to stay in the right range, which means that it's important to have your vitamin D level checked regularly, as in once a year regularly by your doctor. Vitamin K is, the, is kind of new on the bone health front. Studies are showing that it's really important for bone health and for osteoporosis. Vitamin K can help to counter the calcification of the arteries, and it also helps to get calcium into our bones where it's supposed to be. Vitamin K is involved in the coagulation part of our bodies, so if you're taking a blood thinner like, blood thinner like Coumadin, then you might not be able to take vitamin K. So, check with your doctor and pharmacist before taking vitamin K if you're also currently taking a blood thinner. There are two forms of vitamin K to consider taking. There's MK4 and MK7. Both are good and you might even choose to take a supplement that has a mixture of both. MK7 has a longer half-life, so it will last for a longer period of time in your body. 
The right amount of vitamin K2 to take daily is 120 micrograms for men and 90 micrograms for women. Number five on our list, eat foods that have magnesium. Consuming magnesium either in the foods that we eat or by supplementation is important for bone health and osteoporosis. If a person does not have enough magnesium in their diet, then it has a direct effect on the crystal formation of our bones. It also indirectly affects parathyroid hormone and contributes to the development of inflammation in our bodies. Thankfully, magnesium is abundant in many different foods. Some foods that are rich in magnesium include dark chocolate, nuts like almonds and cashews, beans, tofu, avocados, seeds like pumpkin and chia seeds, and whole grains like oats, barley, wheat, and quinoa. Also, bananas and dark leafy greens have magnesium. If you're concerned about the amount of magnesium that you're getting in your diet, a general rule of thumb for magnesium is to supplement about half the amount that you're taking for a calcium supplement. Magnesium, like calcium, does better when it has citrate in it. So look for a magnesium supplement with citrate. New research is also suggesting that calcium and magnesium might be competing for absorption in the body. This makes it a good idea if you're gonna supplement both to take both supplements separately from each other. Number six on our list, make sure that you're getting necessary trace minerals in your diet. Zinc, boron, copper, and manganese are important trace minerals for bone health. Zinc helps to get our bone building cells working. Zinc can be found in foods such as beans, whole grains, eggs, milk and dairy products, red meat, poultry, and fish. Boron helps to keep the calcium in our bodies. It can be found in foods like broccoli, pears, apples, grapes, avocados, bananas, peaches, raisins, tomatoes, and beans. Copper helps to form collagen, which is a significant part of our bones. Copper can be found in chickpeas, cashews, mushrooms, tofu, whole grains, dark chocolate, avocados, potatoes, and beef liver. Manganese helps to, in the formation of new, of new bone, and it also having a deficiency leads to bone loss. Manganese is in foods like beans, soybeans, chickpeas, nuts, including pecans and hazelnuts, oatmeal, brown rice, black pepper, black tea, and spinach. Number seven on our list, consider taking a collagen supplement. Collagen is a protein that makes up much of our bones. There's only one collagen that's been scientifically studied, and that's Fortibone. It's important to note that the Fortibone study was conducted by the makers of Fortibone. That doesn't mean that the research isn't good. It just means that it's the only scientific study so far about collagen. This means that as more research happens, then the recommendations might change. The results from the study look really promising. Fortibone consumed in the amount of five grams per day shows an increase in bone mineral density both at the femoral neck and the spine, as well as increasing bone markers in the blood. These areas are the two that are most prone to fracture. So this is a really good thing. I would personally choose to take Fortibone unless science discovers something better. Fortibone is made by a company called Jolita. When you look for Fortibone, you will be able to find it in a variety of different supplements. Choose whatever one looks best to you. And when you see Fortibone listed as an ingredient, that means that Jolita's formula is being used in that particular supplement. So choose whatever one you want. Number eight on our list, avoid intermittent fasting and other low calorie diets. Intermittent fasting has been shown to be a successful way to lose weight, but it isn't good for our bones. This means that if you're trying to lose weight and you have bone loss, it's better to try a measured, slower mechanism for losing weight. According to a recent study, women who restricted their calorie intake to less than 1,000 calories per day had loss in their bone mineral density at both their hip and femoral neck. This increased their risk of fracture. The study also found that if calorie intake was below 975 calories, even resistance training didn't stop bone loss. Our bodies need us to feed them regularly and healthily. 
Also, it's helpful to consistently maintain blood sugar to improve our gut health and to lessen the amount of stress that we experience. Gut health and stress also both affect bone health. Combined, this makes it important to eat a generally balanced healthy diet with regular consistent meals. Number nine, limit caffeine and alcohol consumption and avoid smoking. The important thing to keep in mind with both caffeine and alcohol is that they should be limited to moderate amounts. Scientifically speaking, this looks like no more than about 200 milligrams or two cups of coffee per day. A 2022 study found that if a person drank eight cups of coffee within a nine hour period, they had a measurably higher level of calcium in their urine. With alcohol, drinking as much as two to three ounces daily makes it more difficult for the stomach to properly absorb calcium. Alcohol consumption can also affect the pancreas and its ability to absorb both calcium and vitamin D. Smoking has been associated with having lower bone mineral density and an increased risk for fracture, so it's best just to not do it. Number 10 on our list, engage in consistent, regular weight-bearing exercise or resistance training. Having strong muscles is critical for building new bone and maintaining our existing bones. Our muscles pull on our bones that creates good stress on our bones and this signals to our bodies that we're using our bones in a particular way and that that area should be reinforced. In essence, we have to use our muscles and our bones or we lose them. This makes weight-bearing exercise a critical part of any plan to improve our bones naturally. There are different ways to do weight-bearing exercise. You could use additional weight by going to the gym or using dumbbells or ankle weights or resistant bands at home. You could also use your own body weight through either yoga or Pilates. If you're choosing to do either yoga or Pilates for osteoporosis, it's essential that you choose to work with someone who understands the unique needs of osteoporosis and can safely adapt the exercises for osteoporosis. So there you have it, 10 ways to build bone naturally. There are a lot of good things on this list and I hope that it gives you some good ideas about things that you can include in your daily life. If you found this information helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And if you wanna explore any of the resources that I referenced in this video, they are all in the description and there are quite a few of them. Talk soon.